Hey, 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 everyone. It's Rita Cherie here, back with the Beauty Brand Empire podcast. I want to welcome you to today's training. I'm so excited you're here. Grab pen and paper. Get rid of all the distractions, guys, because I'm going to show you today how to build a beauty business, any beauty business, without products and services. Guys, this training is going to be epic because if you're in the beauty business, such as a salon owner, a barbershop owner, a makeup artist, esthetician, massage therapist, maybe you have a clothing line, you have a boutique, um, a physical product. Um, this is going to be a way that you can rebrand yourself. This is going to be a way that you can add additional income to your business as well as um, if you're just coming out of cosmetology school or you've relocated and you really want to get into something a different lane, this is going to show you how to do it without investing a dollar in beauty, excuse me, without investing a dollar in products or services, okay? So let's get into this training. Well, while you grab a pen and paper, let me just give you a little bit of background on myself. I've been in the beauty industry for over 20 years. I started off as a student of cosmetology and went on to become a freelance stylist, okay, in the Midwest area. I ended up relocating to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, probably about two years in. Now, when I first started off in, um, in out of cosmetology, guys, I had no idea of how to build a beauty business. Only thing that I was really taught was word to mouth and passing out four by six flyers. That was the only thing that I knew about um, building a beauty business. Well, when I relocated to Atlanta, Georgia, it was on a completely different level. So I was already in corporate America as well as doing hair. Um, so when I actually relocated to Atlanta, Georgia, the young lady that I was roommating with at the time was in the beauty industry as well. And she said, you're going to have to get a full-time job, you know, to cover because you don't have any clients, you don't know anyone. So I said, okay, cool, no problem. Well, doing this, I was able to get a job with the number one wireless communication company in America. It was working here that I really got a first-class education on branding and how to merge technology with your business, especially in the beauty industry because that was the industry that was near and dear to me, okay? Um, after working here, uh, well, while I was working there, I, I met a young lady. I was put in contact with a young lady. Guys, one thing about Atlanta is it's like, and this is anywhere in the world, but when you start to seek a particular purpose, Man, you can run into and be connected to some people, and it's not a coincidence. Well, let me tell you about this experience. I was connected with a young lady that had connects with several celebrity brands, such as the Housewives franchise. This was around the time when Derek J was on the Housewives. I'm not sure if he's still on that particular show, but this was around that time at that particular height of, uh, of the show. Well, long story short, guys, this young lady had no credentials in the beauty industry, not nothing, no, no license. She hadn't even put in 10 hours at a beauty school, okay? She knew nothing about event planning. And just to give you a scope of what she was in charge of doing, she was in charge of the marketing of the event, the catering for the event, the sponsorships for the event, um, promotional materials, the step and repeat, the swag bag, everything. Okay, and I was able to get the opportunity to do all of this for her because at that time, even though I had um, just re relocated from Atlanta, it wasn't like, or excuse me, relocated from the Midwest area, um, I had been in Atlanta at that time for about a good year. So at that time, I was already getting my, foot, my feet wet in the beauty industry as far as understanding promotions and things like that, but it was with her. When I really got a hold to how you can build a successful business without credentials. It was working with her and several other beauty brands and celebrity brands in the metro Atlanta area where I saw people that had profitable businesses that did not have credentials. And on the other hand, I knew people that was doing hair for 20 plus years and still was working a full-time job somewhere else people that didn't even have clients and were having problems with discounting and all type of things. So I'm like, wait a minute. You know, there has to be something up with this. And this is how I got introduced to business strategy. Because it's not what you know, it's not what you do. It's how you do it. 
And here I am, guys. I wanted to share this formula with you that I discovered. There's a formula that over 95% of the brands and businesses in the world are following. And particularly, this particular formula that I have put together is specifically for the beauty industry. You can take any of your celebrity brands, hands down, Razor Chick, Kylie Cosmetics, Kaior Cosmetics, Bumble and Bumble, Ke uh, Kim, what's her name? Kim Kimball, um, Kardashian West Cosmetics, uh, Sephora, um, Huda, Lancome, whoever, the iPhone, Rolls Royce, whoever, Luxy Hair, any brand. And like I said, we're talking about the beauty industry, Fashion Nova, any beauty industry business that you want to put together, this formula will break it down for you. And I decided that I wanted to put this information out there in the beauty business because according to Salon Today magazine, in 2018, we lost over 18,000 salons. Um, and when I say salon, I don't mean just a hair salon. I mean barbershop, salon, nail, nail shops, okay, all of that. And they gave several different reasons why. Um, it was due to bad customer service. The, the marketplace is bored with old business models. They're not happy at the salons and barbershops. You have the salon suites that have taken the uh, nation by storm. There were all types of issues and reasons behind why they believe that we have lost over 18,000 retail locations. Okay, and that's a staggering number. But here's the deal, what I realized, guys. Outside of it not being what you know and who you know and how you do it, it's all about how you do it. What I really realized is, regardless if you have a salon, a salon suite, a barbershop, a boutique online or offline, if you don't have clients, you don't have a business. And that's the end of the story. If you don't have clients, you don't have business. And when I say how these... Um, particular people was generating clients and leads and sponsors. Listen, guys, when I was doing the event for the young lady um, with the housewives that had the thing for the housewives franchise, guys, she was going out to Macy's and getting all type of sponsor product and outfits, and she had wardrobe. I mean, guys, it blew my mind, okay? So what I ended up doing was I decided I wanted to put this information out for the beauty industry. Because at the end of the day, I can bring you all the things that I learned. There's only going to be a select few of you that's going to be the action takers. So I decided to put this out for you. And without further ado, guys, let's get into this training. The first thing you want to think about as far as building a business without products and services is what type of business do you want? What type of beauty business do you want? You know, you have to make that decision. You know, you don't want to be all over the place. So if you are in the the makeup industry, make up your mind. Like, you know, what part of the makeup industry? Is it going to be wedding makeup? Is it going to be everyday makeup? Is it going to be um, sci-fi makeup, Halloween makeup? What beauty business are you in? Okay, are you into kid haircuts, haircuts, salon, um, weaves? Are you into uh, natural hair, you know, curls? What is your thing? Okay. Are you all about the tanning salon, the massage therapy, estheticians? You know, what type of beauty business do you want? Do you have a product for, or do you have an idea about hair loss? You know, what type of business do you want? You know, before you can do anything, you always have to decide what do you want. There's so many people that's undecisive about what they want. There's all type of maps and strategies to get you there, but if you don't know where you want to go, what are we supposed to do? Okay, so after you decide what type of beauty business you want, the next one is to decide who do you want to help? What type of people do you want to help? Okay, now here's the deal too. When you decide on what type of uh, business you want, I always like to tell people, think about the money you want to make as well in the same term. And why do I say that? When you think about the type of money you want to make, because it's all about you, first off. Before you even hit the customer, because if you're not happy, your customer's not going to be happy. Okay, so before you even start talking about what type of client or who can I serve, think about your vision first. Is your vision. So you want to understand what type of business I want to make next. 
how much money do I want to make? That way, that's going to also give me a clear picture of what type of people that I want to help, okay? And some people might say, well, what does the money have to do with it? Well, when you can reverse engineer your dream, because at the end of the day, you start to understand everybody's not going to support your dream. It's just like how a lot of us start businesses and we think our friends are going to support us and they don't. Everybody's not going to support your dream. You could do research for 10 years straight and give your friends the information for free. They won't do it. They won't do it. Some of them will. Some of them won't. That's okay. You start to understand, okay, this type of person, that's not my client. That's not my ideal client. And when you understand the money that you want to make, you will start to understand the type of client you want. And to get into more detail of that, you can check out their occupation, their hobbies, their age, their income, their location, their gender, their interests, their values. There are so many different ways that you can really customize the ideal client for what you want to offer. Now, some of you might say, well, I don't know. How do I even, how do I figure out? What type of client? I, I, I see all these different descriptions, but I'm starting at ground zero. Here's what you do when you're starting at ground zero, or if you want to refresh your brand or your business. Take a look at people's businesses that are getting the results that you want or similar results that you want. Research them. Go check them out. Go to their social media pages and research and look at and observe the people that are getting the results you want. My favorite mentor, one of them, Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. Is there something that you don't know how to do? Go check out someone that has done it or are getting similar results. And I promise you, through observation, no, you won't get everything, but through observation, you will get over 75% of the information that you need. Okay? So what type of people do you want to help? Next, some of you might be thinking, okay, I understand how much money I make. I understand what industry I want to be in and the people that I want to uh, help out. But how will I service people without products and services? It just don't make sense to you right now, right? How do you do it? Here's the basic and raw foundation framework of any business, whether you got products or services or not. It's all about the problem-solution framework. And what I mean by that is every business is in business because it solves a problem. It gives a solution to a problem. Your hair is thin, here's some cream. Your hair is thin, here's a lace front wig. Okay? Um, your jeans don't fit, here's a waist trainer. Here's a body suit. Okay? Um, you want a little bit of coloring, you're tired of looking pale, here's some spray on tan. You want glittery skin? Here's a glow stick. Here's some, some shimmer. Here's some glitter. Okay? You got acne. You got bad acne. Here's a skincare program. It's all about solving a problem. Okay? It's all about solving a problem. So when you think about it in this terms, guys, you can help so many people. But now the thing that you must do is you must decide, well, which problem am I going to solve? Well, guys, this is why you have to decide, number one, what business you're going to be in. Okay, that's going to start really giving you a clear picture of, as far as the problem that you want to solve. Number two, the type of people you're going to be working with because everybody has different problems. So, for an example, just to get back on this, and not just to lay on it, but it's a big issue with a lot of people, excuse me, the hair, the hair loss thing, okay? So, say for you say, you know what, I want to get into hair and I know one of the big problems is hair loss. There's a lot of different solutions for hair loss. Everybody don't want to weave. Some people want weave. Some people want wigs. Okay? Some people want cream. They want to grow their own hair back. Some people want hair plugs. Some people want hair transplants. What solution will you favor to solve for your particular client? So let's go back to the people part about it. Say, for instance, if you were tackling an issue as far as men and their hair thinning, okay, like the celebrity barber Wade, this guy has taken the man weave to another level. 
Now, a lot of people uh, this year and last year, they were cracking jokes about it. I saw them with their memes. They were cracking jokes about the man weave. But this guy is making over six figures with man weaves. Do you know why? Because he solved the problem. See, a lot of people were laughing, but a lot of more people wanted to get that solution from him. So that's why he's a six-figure and probably close to seven figures now. Okay? But he is a six to seven figure celebrity barber and he specializes in man weaves. How will you service your people? What problem will you solve? Now, my advice to you is to get three to five problems that you see in the industry you want to get in. And start thinking about those. Start writing them down. You don't know, you don't have a clue what issues are. And you know what? When you decide what industry you're in, I truly believe that you'll really start to see the issues they're having. But if you don't, again, go to the website of the people that are doing what you want to do and see what problem they're solving. Because there's no business under the sun that is in business because they're not solving a problem. If you're not solving a problem, you're not in business. If you're not putting it like you're solving a problem to the, to the customer, you don't have a lot of clients. I can guarantee you that. Let's move on. So once you understand the problems, the issues they're having, the next step would be to understand the buyer's journey. Okay? This is understanding your customer on a completely different level now. There is something called the buyer's journey. Guys, if you, under, if you don't get anything else out of this, get this. Because this is very important and it's, it's understudied um, in the beauty industry, in business in general. There is a process or a journey that every person goes through, whether it be one through three or one and three, but there is a process. It is called the buyer's journey, regardless of what you're buying. So, for example, number one part of the buyer's journey is awareness. This says that you as a consumer, you're stating that I have a problem. There's a problem. Something's wrong. I have a cold. My hair is shitty. Uh, my nails are brittle. Um, I don't like this color of makeup. I'm not getting the right color for my foundation. Uh, my hairline is receding. Okay. Um, I have bad acne. My muscles are sore. I'm tired. My feet hurt. Problem after problem after problem. Okay. You're the first part of it is you identify you saying you know what I have a problem. You becoming aware to the problem. So do you know what that leads you to doing? That leads you to doing research. Okay, the awareness part of it. You're aware. Now you're starting to do research. Well, let me see. What are the symptoms to me getting hair loss? There is something going on here. Next, you're going to be going to consideration. Consideration means I have identified what the problem is. Maybe it's one of three issues, but I have more of a detailed uh, a detailed, like a detailed idea as far as what the problem is. I've identified. And at this same time, now I'm starting to consider several brands. Okay? So I see this brand, they got this particular thing. Now this one. So let me see, who am I going to choose? Okay? There's now the customer. It's just like us guys, when we want to go buy something, what do we do? We research it, we Google it, we go to Amazon, we look at reviews. See what I'm saying? We see, we know we had a problem, now we researched it. Then we went on to, now we're going to compare. Well, let me see, should I get this from Walmart.com or Amazon? You know, where should I get this from? Should I Google it? Should I go to Alibaba? Like, where should I get this? Should I go to eBay? You're considering it because you've identified the problem. And last but not least is the decision. Okay, it's a decision. You're finally there to make a solution. You know what? I've narrowed it down to these two. I'm going to go ahead and go with this company. Okay, and listen, guys, when you really understand your target market, you could get someone that identifies, well, before I even go there, when you identify your target market, when you really understand your ideal client, you could literally, you could literally place yourself in a position where the ideal client or the prospect, they come, they, I mean, they think of you on top, hands down. So say, for instance, if you know that the problem that your industry is having is um, they need early appointments, okay, because they don't have time. They're so busy, they're an executive. They need 
unconvenient and early appointment. You understand that's the type of client. You want a high-powered executive client. You understand your people, so you know that their time is very important to them. So when they come to this problem, man, you know what? I can't never get a haircut when I need it. I can't never get this when I need it. Now they're thinking about brands, right? They're considering a different brand. They're considering this. They're considering that. But then they see your solution. Hey, we're open at 5 a.m. for the early bird, for the high-powered executive. Who do you think they're going to pick? You. Why? Because you've identified, you place yourself in a particular position that says, we are looking for you. We have what you need, and we, we have identified what's most important to you. Okay? But for this particular training, we're going to talk about the awareness side of it. This is really how you can corner the market as far as starting a business without products and services. Because the awareness side of it speaks directly to the problem. See, we're in business because we're solving problems, right? But at some point, the customer is going to end up solving that issue. But when you can remain in that spot where you're always solving a problem, this is how you get evergreen customers that always come. This is how you can start to put your client base on a 24-hour thing, when you're always solving the problem, when you understand your target market, okay? So how will you reach these people? How will you reach these people? Okay, I got the problem I need to solve. How am I going to get to them? You, you start to think about expanding your brand and reaching people through Facebook, different social media channels. Really, to me, in my opinion, this is what social media is about. It's about connecting, I'm saying on the business level, it's about connecting yourself to your target audience through different platforms. Okay? This is what it's about. It's about, the, it's about you connecting to your target audience through different platforms. How will you reach your target audience? Through Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn, YouTube, okay, Tumblr. Okay, how will you reach your target audience? They have to be able to contact you, okay? They have to be able to connect with your brand. You don't want to be the best kept secret. So how will you get your brand out there without actually purchasing products and services? You do it through the social media platform. Now let's take a closer look to see which platform would be a better fit for your particular um, thing. So where is my target market? Well, this takes a look at the top famous or the most famous and popular social media platforms. So starting off, you have Facebook. There's 2 billion people on Facebook. Okay, Facebook is all about strong visuals and videos. Okay, you got Instagram with millennials. But it is 7 million people, active users. Facebook has 2 billion active monthly users. But here's the deal with Instagram. Since Facebook acquired it, you now have access to Facebook and Instagram on one platform. Okay, so that's super huge. Next, you got Twitter, which is most popular amongst technology, um, marketing professionals, entertainment, politically focused people. There's 320 million active users on Twitter. Okay. Um, next, you got YouTube. YouTube is 1 billion active users. And these numbers may have increased by now. Um, YouTube is everywhere, especially popular with the millennial generation. But anyone that's visual, Okay, a lot of people love YouTube. A lot of times, this is the first place where people go when they're researching things. They're going to YouTube. Well, let me see how that works. Let me see the ending result of that particular product. They go to YouTube. Some people do. Not everybody, though. Next, you have uh, Snapchat. Okay, Snapchat is pretty cool, again, depending on, you know, who you're reaching out to. So maybe you had a salon or a boutique, excuse me, you could do a salon as well, or a barbershop, but let's just go with, the, let's go with a boutique this time. Say, for instance, you had a boutique and you specialize in um, black tie events, okay? You specialize in black tie events. So you figured out that in your particular area or a particular time of the year, all the millennials at that time or teens at that time are getting ready for prom. And you take your information to Snapchat. This will be an excellent way to start to build a business 
in the beauty industry without investing in products and services. Okay, next you have LinkedIn, um, and LinkedIn is known for, it's really on a professional level from all industries, but they're very popular in the medical industry. There are 467 million, million excuse me, monthly active users. Okay, that is huge. But let's take even a closer look um, from the social commerce point of uh, perspective, meaning let's take a look at the effects of the different industries on social media. So for Facebook, it has drop shipping, jewelry, clothing, and apparel, and photography. Okay, and that's obvious because it's a visual platform along with Instagram. Okay, um, Pinterest is services, uh, books and magazines, antique collectibles, IT and computer niching, things of this nature. Okay, for Pinterest, um, a lot of us, we're now going, especially in the hair industry, Pinterest is huge. Um, YouTube, digital products services, merchandising, the automotive industry, okay, Twitter, retail catalogs, home furnishings, gifts and specialty items. I mean, look at this format. Look at this diagram here. This gives you an idea as far as where you could take your information to, um, where you could take your information to, to literally impact your industry and start a business without products and services. Now, the one that I really want to touch on today is about blogging, okay? Now, blogging is one of the oldest forms of social media, but blogging is so simple and easy, and the reason why I always suggest blogging is because blogging is something that will provide you with evergreen content for the rest of your business life. If you, because here's the deal. In most industries, there's always key problems. There's always key problems. And those problems will be the reason why that industry will stay uh, in business, really, for the rest of their day. And don't get me wrong, sometimes you have to evolve. But the core problems that an industry always have, like let's, let's give an example, weight loss. Weight loss, their main industries, I mean, their main issues has always been either the food, we don't have time to prepare the food, or we don't have time to exercise. Those are two issues that you know in the beauty industry, I don't care what happened, until they invent the magic pill, time to cook and prepare the meals and the time to actually work out will always be two issues, okay? And if you have content, it could be YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, or Facebook, but we're talking about blogging. If you have content online through blogging, people will contact you. I'm talking about year after year after year because of that content when you have it um, created and curated correctly. Here's another reason why I'm suggesting blogging. Guys, you could literally pay about $5 and get yourself an article. So think about if you discover four to five issues in your industry and you pay $5 per, um, per article. Guys, that is $25 that you invested to get a presence online that's going to solve problems for people with your blog. Okay? That's $25 to connect with people that you already know are having issues in your particular industry. This is why blogging, I always suggest blogging. You could do a podcast. There's so many different things that you could do, but blogging is the most cost-effective YouTube is not bad. I love YouTube, but YouTube with the videos, you have to put more thought into the content. You can also have people create the YouTube videos for you as well, but you're going to pay about $45 to $50 on up, and that's for like a 30 to 60-minute clip, okay? So when you're back at the YouTube, I'm sorry, when you're back at the blogging, you can get these articles wrote one time, and most of the articles that you get will be delivered within two to three business days, okay? Think about how huge that is. So now you have your blog. I know some of you are like, okay, well, I have a YouTube channel. I have a Facebook channel, lady. I got Pinterest. I got all of these things you're talking about, blogging, all of that. Show me the money. How do I make money without investing any money in products and services? Let's get to it. Number one, affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is simply uh, a fancy way of saying a referral service. 
affiliate marketing is huge, though, guys. It's, it's huger than what we really realize. Um, it's referral marketing on steroids because affiliate marketing has went to the digital world. See, a lot of these things that's going on in the industry right now, we've been doing them. No one has really created anything new, but we have innovated the way we are exposed to them. We have innovated the way we are bringing them to the marketplace. That's what makes them a new thing, and that's what makes them so excitable and, and, and so uh, much joy and, and, and bring so many different tools and, and just options and opportunities to the marketplace. Okay, number one, affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing says, I don't want to purchase your products or services, but I want to promote them because I believe in them. Okay, and you can sometimes buy one of the products. You can get a sample of the product. But at the end of the day, you will get commissions off of referring the person to actually purchase that product. And here's the thing about affiliate marketing, guys. Affiliate marketing paid thirty to $30,000. That's huge. And if you don't believe me, check out ClickBank. Check out jvpartners.com. But check out ClickBank.com and check out some of the commissions that they pay out. You will see what I'm talking about. Next, drop shipping. Listen, guys, I, I love drop shipping. I love it, love it, love it. You know, like anything in business, it has its pros and cons. But with drop shipping, it's mainly pros. Why? Because you can be affiliated with a physical product without purchasing the inventory. Now, with drop shipping, I always suggest buy one of the items. You know, don't just start selling it. I'm just saying when you want a higher quality business, you want to actually test the product because you truly want to believe in it. Because I'm telling you guys, there are people that build up YouTube channels and blogs. They don't ever purchase the product. But just because they take the time out to identify the issues, people listen to their every word that they say. And here's the crazy part about it. They'll believe you, but if you ever suggest something to them that's crap, you'll lose your credibility. So that's why I'm saying even if you're doing drop shipping, try to test the product out. Um, guys, I have an extensive list of drop shippers, especially in the boutique and fashion industry. I have a list of over 10 wholesalers that all of your favorite influencer marketers that have boutiques, go to all the time. And you don't have to have you don't have to have tax ID. You don't have to purchase a certain amount. Okay? But with these companies, you can actually drop ship their product. So say for instance if you wanted to start a boutique and you said I know a lot of times in my particular industry uh, ladies are having problems with finding jeans. And then you find this company that drop ships jeans and they have a wide variety of all type of jeans. Okay, you don't even have to purchase the jeans. But I'm going to suggest that you purchase at least one so you can see the quality of the jeans. But at the end of the day, guys, you will make a profit if they purchase the jeans and you don't even have to touch the inventory. The company will ship it and everything for you, okay, in an unmarked box. Okay, they will get their product and they will remember, man, I got it from this website. And you haven't even purchased any of the products at all. Next. Ebooks and guides, guys, listen. Ebooks and guides, man, these are so powerful. I'll be honest with you. In my opinion, I truly believe there should not be any salons or barbershops or boutique that does not at least have one ebook that they have to sell. You should at least have one ebook or guide. Okay, now ebook is so easy. Some of you guys might say, well, I don't have time to write. Um, I've been trying to write a book for six years and it's just not coming. Guys, I have a complete template where you can write a book in 30 days, whether you have writer's block or not. A simple format. But here's the other thing, guys, with the guide. The guide is so cool because you don't even have to have, it don't have to be an ebook. The guide could simply be something that is solving another problem. So for an example, we know at-home stylists are here to stay, right? We can't make people come to the salon. Some people just want to do it at home. So why not create a guide? So say, for instance, if you were a, a, a hair salon or a stylist and you're really good at coloring, okay, and you understand that everybody can't contact you, they're not in your city, they're not going to be able to make it, they can't afford you, but guess what you decide to do? You decide 
to create a guide, okay, for the at-home colorist. Here are the things you should buy hands down. If you're into coloring your hair, here are the, the tools that you should always have on hand. Here are my top favorite products to buy out of the beauty supply if I'm not going for professional coloring. Here's the shampoos. Here's why you should get it. Not to mention if you added affiliate marketing in there, you could get them connected with other products. But just think about that, guy, because, see, everybody does not want to go to YouTube. Some people want a PDF. They're so into their thing, they want the book or the PDF right on their phone. So when they get to the beauty supply, whoop, this is what I need. I got it right here. I didn't, oh, man, I forgot the gloves. I need this. I need that. Think about that. You can sell the e-book and guides from 7 to $37. Now, think about how powerful that is in the background. Okay, think about how powerful that is if you were one man or one woman army. Think about that. With ebooks, guys, ebooks and guys, drop shipping and affiliate marketing, guys, this does not put you in a box where you have to have a huge team, where you have to have a fancy retail location. This, this gives you the option and flexibility to build a business the way you want to. And what I'm so, what I really love about this formula, what I'm so proud about bringing this to you is you could literally have a business or you could be fresh out of cosmetology and you might want to dibble and dabble in a new market and just see, well, let me see how it works. Let me see if it will really be a good fit. Let me see if it won't be too much for me. When you do it this way, it's not like you're investing a lot of money. See, if you get those articles made by solving those problems, regardless if you stay in that business or not, you could still use that as a way to get clients forever and ever. As long as the internet exists, that one time that you got that content created through the ebooks, the guides, the, the blog, you can continue to use it over and over and over again. That's why it's important for you to come at it from the angle of solving a problem and providing the solution. Number four, paid membership groups and forums. Guys, this one right here is so easy, especially if you already have a following. But not only that, some of you guys have certain things that you've been through, certain knowledge that people will pay you. Like literally, I'm about to join another group, and it's a paid membership group, but it's all about coaching and bettering each other. But the young lady, she has went from zero to like two million in three years. This lady has no college degree. She did it through network marketing and getting uh, different um, products that she truly believe in. I mean, this lady has completely leveled up. She has a television show now, and she has a paid membership group, okay? And I'm going to be joining her group. Guys, someone else will join your group. Depending on what you have conquered, depending on the knowledge that you have, people will pay you for your knowledge. I see it all the time, guys, on YouTube. People are paying for tarot readings. And it's not in the beauty industry, but think about it. People don't get an actual physical product with a tarot with a tarot card read. You might get a video, you might get a chart, you might get a PDF file, but people are paying, and they will pay you too. Five, last but not least, promotional ads. Okay, there is a, a model called freemium, and freemium just pretty much says you're building up a community for free like how Instagram followers, YouTube subscribers, or blog followers, um, YouTube channel, um, excuse me, Facebook groups. You're building up this community for free, okay, as leverage. And then you're going to have other people come in and advertise. This is the same business model that, excuse me, guys, that a lot of the corporations are following. This is why a lot of corporations are sponsoring at-home stylists on YouTube because those stylists, they're at home with no credentials, but they recognize the problem of their target market, and now they have built up their YouTube channel, their podcast, their Facebook group, their blog, their everything. They've built up it as leverage, and now big companies want to sponsor them because they understand that they have contact with their target market. Now, the powerful thing about this is you don't have to have a following right away, okay? You don't have to have a following right away. The way you could use this is you will start it with your advertisement, uh, excuse me, with your blog post, 
okay? And trust and believe, if you are solving a problem, before you know it, you'll have a group of people that will be interested in what you have to offer, okay? Here's another thing, guys. You might have some things that people want to offer, and you have it placed in a way that it really sticks out to the target market. You can still get sponsorships, and the only thing you have to tell them is, look, I don't have what I need, but if I had what, what I'm asking you for, I could get everything that I needed, okay? Because you have to put it in a place where it's a win-win for everybody, okay? When you have great ideas and you're solving a problem and you're moving in purpose, people will invest in you. Listen, guys, between affiliate marketing, drop shipping, e-books and guides, paid membership, groups and forums, and promotional ads, Guys, that's five ways that you can make money in any beauty industry without investing in products or services. I truly believe that in the beauty industry today, there should be no reason why you should not have one of these tools working for you in your beauty business. Whether you have a salon, a suite, a barbershop, a boutique, whether you're by yourself or you have a complete team, I really want you to understand the power of these. And I want to challenge you, before the year is over, add one of these to your arsenal, to your um, income strategy, and I promise you it will change your business. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or any, um, any questions about speaking opportunities or personal coaching, you can always contact me at vitasheree at gmail.com or sign up for the up-and-coming free webinar. And I, at that webinar, I'm going to explain to you the complete formula that we discussed earlier. You can sign up for that at www.beautybrandempire.com. Until next time, guys, be blessed and prosperous. I'll see you soon.